So uh, in uh, 2010, we formed the business, and uh, the first thing we did was we bought the sub in the upper left called Antipodes, and this was our training sub. Uh, it had been a uh, tourist sub in the South Island of New Zealand. We use that to take everyone from uh, journalists to venture capitalists to lay people to Macklemore, you name it, we took them in the sub to try to figure out, okay, what is the business model here? We thought that there was this opportunity, there was this need for people to go in the ocean. There were researchers who wanted to go in the ocean. Robots, autonomous vehicles had their place, but there was a spot for humans to go down there, more so even than there's a reason for humans to go to space. Um, but what was the model there? And we thought, well, there are folks who want to do high-end adventure tourism, people who were going, uh, spending $100,000 to climb Everest or to go to Antarctica. Maybe we could merge the two. So we got that, and we dove all over the place. We dove in oh, Alcatraz Island, uh, Monterey, Gulf of Mexico, you name it. We went around. And then in 2015, we launched the Cyclops Project, which generated the uh, minimum viable prototype on the lower left, which I strongly recommend, as would most folks. Uh, we just got it out there to figure out what we could do. It can only go only to 1,600 feet. Um, like Titanic is 12,500 feet deep. But it helped us uh, build out the business model, get awareness, work on our launch and recovery system, which we'll talk about a little bit. And ultimately, in 2017, we dove Titan, which is the, uh, the queen of the fleet. We have five subs. Uh, one goes to 1,000 feet, one goes to 1,600 feet, and Titan goes to 13,200 feet deep done a bunch of ex, uh, expeditions, and learned that there, there are many challenges. There's the uh, technology challenge, there is the, um, there's a regulatory challenge, there are a bunch of things to do, but those expeditions have really helped us uh, hone our skills. So to do this, we had to uh, use a different material. Um, titanium is the common, there's some, some high strength uh, carbon steels that are used, I think the Russians use those, but uh, titanium uh, is, um, Let's put it this way. Carbon fiber is three times better on a strength to buoyancy basis than titanium. And underwater, that's what you care about. It's not strength to weight, it's strength to buoyancy. And yet no one had done that. And there are uh, certifying or semi-certifying agencies, the uh, Pressure Vessels for Human Occupation Committee that uh, handles hyperbaric chambers and submarines. You have the SubSafe program in the, uh, in the Navy. These programs are uh, over the top in their rules and regulations, but they had nothing with carbon fiber. So we had to go out and, uh, and work on that. And one of the things I learned is, you know, when you're outside the box, it's really hard to tell how far outside the box you really are. Uh, and we were pretty far out there. So we have a, a carbon fiber hull, it's five inches thick, uh, and titanium uh, domes on the end. One of the things that uh, I think a lot of people appreciate is if you're not breaking things, you're not innovating. Uh, if you're operating within a known environment, um, as most submersible manufacturers do, they don't break things. Uh, Woods Hole uh, does a lot of autonomous things. They have a whole wall of stuff they've broken. To me, the more stuff you've broken, the more innovative you've been. And this is a third scale model that we took to the chamber at the University of Washington and took it to destruction. Uh, and once you go over 6,000 PSI uh, in the Ocean Sciences Building, you can only do that at night. And then they get on the loudspeaker and they tell everybody to get out. And now I'm standing next to this chamber and we blow this thing up. It's the loudest thing I've ever heard. It shook the whole building, blew out all the pressure sensors, which I had to rebuy for the university. Um, but it helps us validate an acoustic monitoring system because in the research found out that with composites, what you really want is acoustic monitoring. Strain gauges don't tell you a lot because they just tell you the deformation on the inner surface. When you're dealing with composites, uh, acoustics will pop and crackle and it's almost like having an EKG. You can tell how the hull is doing and if we were going to stretch this new material in a new environment with people inside, we needed to know well before it failed that it failed. Our rule is we risk capital, we don't risk people. So if somebody comes to me and says, hey, here's a new idea for the, the sub, if the, uh, the end result of that failing is that we cancel a mission or we lose a little money, that's fine. If somebody gets hurt, then we go and find out a, a different approach. And with the acoustic monitoring system, we can tell if the hull has had some problem over time. Maybe uh, it was run into by a forklift and we didn't know it or dropped in its transport on its way to the East Coast. Um, because the pressure and temperature at 1,000 meters and 2,000 meters and 3,000 meters is always the same. And so if it's making noises at that depth that it didn't make on the last dive, then we can stop the dive, we can go up, and we can find out what might have happened. In one hull, uh, I took it to 4,000 meters, um, uh, and it made a lot of noise, which is a very sphincter tightening experience.
we're doing with the 8K and the 4K is to try to make this uh, more accessible for, for the folks who can't afford the $250,000 that, that it costs to go with us on the dive. But what we want to do is do immersive exhibits like the Van Gogh and other immersive exhibits that are very popular so that you can go out and see an image of the Titanic as it was just a few months ago or over the period of years as we go back year after year in photorealistic three-story high image. Uh, I think that's going to be very compelling. We're also working on streaming series, and uh, BBC will have a piece coming out actually tonight on, on our expedition.